Now that I have finally met young Florette, I should work to ascertain her innocent or guilt. She got breakfast. She was dawdling. She claims innocence and she has clearly been crying. Collection slip. Hmm. Please bring this receipt with you when you come to collect your garment. Amended sleeve, place button, inclined hair. I wonder who uh, the wine connoisseur of the house is. Probably Mama. To receive uh -huh. such a note of devotion and love must have been a delight. Signed from Luc. Do you miss his love, I wonder? My love is an obligation that has taken me away from you, but it is my heart that will keep us together. My aunt is in much better health, rest, and some company has done her wonders. I hope to return to you and my duties at the house in a matter of days. Until then, keep well and know that you are always in my thoughts now and forever, Luke. Poker. Hmm. Poker stand is without the poker. Well, we know where that is. Letter. I do not always agree with the telephone companies and their charges, but ignoring the bills will not make them disappear. So they're not paying bills. Oh, Emmy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Let parcel. Hmm. Wrap parcel completely soaked through. I hope it has not ruined the contents. It's most likely the uh, personalized handkerchief. Oh. The initials EP. Suggest this is Elizabeth. A nasty black soot smudge is apparent. Well. So, we found the specky. Which is great. Um. We did that. There's the final demand. Which might be why there's so many. I demands. must act on thought. I cannot see the logic in... Well, the final demand is why they don't have a phone. Some would say a lucky get. I'm not surprised. But the cleaning rag is covered in black powder. The pieces of the puzzle are... Perhaps handkerchief was used to clean up what the rag did not. Exactly. So we have to talk to Elizabeth. And then there's two here. So, the breakfast is largely untouched. So, formal suit. Note from Luke. So, the collection ship was for this. Another success. Seems someone collected this by hand. Collected from the tailors. Could it have been Florette? Are yeah. To become Elizabeth must have requested Florette's assistance this morning. So we gotta talk to Elizabeth. Well, talk to Florette, sorry. And then Ben and Poker was missing from the poker. Another state. success. Seems Angeline may have been the last one to use it. Poker was moved. This one. Oh man. <sighs> Selling the heirlooms. Magnifique. Right, never mind. The family must be in a far worse position than I thought. Yeah. They're selling their heirlooms. There's still another one. Me. Yeah? Some would say yeah. a lucky guess. I would say... It cannot be a coincidence that what is not being sold has been recently insured. There's more to Madame von de Bosch's accusation of Florette than it seems. A young maid would make for her the perfect scapegoat. And with such coincidental timing ensuring the bracelet, there are still questions to be asked. Talk to Elizabeth, talk to Cassandra. Alright, well, we're going to talk to Florent because I'm right here. Anything to show you I didn't do it. And Madame, I need this job, Monsieur. Was it you who collected the parcel this yes. morning while in town? Another thing on my to-do list. I'm afraid it's not in the same condition as when I picked it up. At whose request? It was a favor for Lizzie. I didn't mind having to get it. Merci. 
I shall take everything. Feel like they're getting married. Let's go talk to Elizabeth. I figured out some things about you, Lizzie. Certainly, officer. The lounge? A package? We. Oui, it is quite hard to miss. Oh, how silly of me. I must have had my head in the clouds this morning. I'm sorry, I can't help you further. Madame is under a great deal of strain. It can't have been easy for her to lose her husband, raising Mademoiselle alone. She can be quick to anger. And this morning, it sounds as though it was such an occasion. It's not the first time I have had to stand and watch such treatment. I hate to see it. As I said, Madame hasn't had the easiest time. Madame's scolding of Florette this morning was the worst I have seen her temper. I wish you could see that Florette is just trying to do her best. Could there have been another reason for such a reaction? Madame was not happy Florette was late. All through breakfast, Madame was watching her with a piercing eye. But she's still learning the way. Besides the terrible rain? No. I woke, began my duties with Mademoiselle. I had already laid out a clean dress. I helped her into it and prepared her for the day before getting started on tidying her room as neat as a pin. Lies. And the bracelet was still there when you left the room for breakfast? I am sure of it. I had it down before Mademoiselle Angeline. Huh. Why, yes, officer. I misplaced it after wiping a stain from Mademoiselle Angeline's sleeve at breakfast. You are a great detective. <laughs> hmm. You are not the first to say. Had she not noticed it herself, I imagine Madame would not allow even the smallest imperfection. It baffles me how she couldn't have. It was only luck that I spotted it before Madame, and a good thing I did. Merci, Mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Interesting. I unlocked another new mind map. Uncover Elizabeth's secret. Mademoiselle Elizabeth was reluctant to acknowledge the parcel. I can... Hidden inside the coat pocket. Order and method. Well, they're gonna get married. That's what this is this trying will to not say. Get me any the note from Luke. The formal suit. I must no. act on thought. The pieces yes. of the puzzle are finally coming. The carving acts as a subtle and private reminder for them both. I know Elizabeth and Luke are courting. They're gonna get married. I should not be surprised by my... Perhaps the relationship is more serious. A betrothed, the gold band. What a revelation! They are planning to elope with her beloved. Now I can go talk to Elizabeth and be like, hey, I know that you're getting Certainly married to Luke. Sir. You seemed rather How excited. I may not enjoy his other works. But how can one not be blown away by a story of two so deeply in love that they will risk everything just to be together? She's doing it herself. Especially being able to draw similarities between Verona's star-crossed lovers to yourself and your dearest. But I hadn't told. Mademoiselle, I am an officer of the law. It is my duty to uncover the truth. Please, you cannot say anything to Madame. She is against staff relationships of any kind. In her eyes, a relationship between staff is nothing more than a distraction. But he means so much more to you. Oh, officer. I have found my soulmate. Oh. At first, it was nothing more than pleasantries around the grounds. But that quickly changed. I know it's not proper for a young lady to pursue a gentleman. But once I knew his feelings reciprocated my own, why shouldn't I have followed my heart? Love transcends professional and societal rules the mere thought of him was enough to make me blush but i knew that madame would never give her blessing if we wanted to continue we would have to do so in secret the summer evenings here are just so beautiful 
I often find myself walking around the grounds after my daily duties are complete. And it was one such evening that Luke was waiting for me at the gazebo. He looked ever so handsome. And the poem he had prepared. He had barely started reading and Aww. I was already a blubbering mess. Standing there beneath the warm glow of the falling sun, he asked for my hand. And well, I that's cute. My heart with no hesitation. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I've been I don't think it was so her long. now. She had a you secret, but wasn't that she stole. To listen to me rambling aimlessly. One should never apologize for such a charming and bewitching story of love. But you are correct. While the culprit still eludes us, at least I found that out. Work is not, it's not complete. too hard to deduce. <laughs> love, Mademoiselle Elizabeth and Luke share is obvious, and yet she remains respectful of Madame's ruling, no matter the ridiculous nature of it. I cannot see her defying her code and stealing the. Merci, Mademoiselle. Yes, no, I really don't think that Lizzie did it. Go talk to Cassandra. Uh, okay, so. Some would say a lucky guess. I As she was constantly busy and under the watchful eye of Madame, she lacked an opportunity. Goes, what yeah. a revelation. Yeah. Well, Madame sees the opportunity and attempt to improve and continue to hide her financial woes. Florette is the scapegoat, is what I have learned. And then here, Angeline removed a soot stain. Another success. Which means she was in the I room. Never know. And hit the bracelet in the chimney. And then had this poker with her while she went to breakfast. Dude, you are sloppy, Cassandra. Really, officer, you are wasting. If you have something to ask, officer, I suggest you stop wasting oh. my time further and just get on with it. I have already seen and heard how hot tempered Madame Van der Blush can be. I should approach this with some sensitivity. And this is how she repays me. I will not be happy until I see her sufficiently punished. I am glad you have finally come to your senses and have seen her guilt. It has been Difficult since the Viscount left us. It was he that oversaw all finances. I was far more the social face of the family. I suppose now I must be both. I have tried my best to provide for Angeline, although sometimes she may not see it that way. She is not to know about what we have discussed. It is my burden to carry. You are accepting the hand you have been dealt and raising a fine young mademoiselle. That is all that can be asked of you. And you have done nothing but bother my staff and my family. I cannot stand here any longer and listen to this second-rate officer speaking such drivel. Oh. Crud. Madame van der Bosch offers me the smallest slither of emotion showing how she cares for her daughter before she makes haste for the door. Is it out of embarrassment or perhaps there's something she's still trying to hide? I broke down her defences and obtained some new evidence. I hit a nerve with her. Wonderful. Ooh, floor's messy. I wonder if Mademoiselle Angeline noticed Mademoiselle... Abrupt departure. Can I talk to you? The longer you are here, the fir Yeah. Would you say that your mama is happy with young Florette's mama work? Mama is never happy with anything these days. Also, Florette does have a habit of not doing things exactly how mama wants them done. And how does she react when she sees Florette not doing things the correct way? Mama has a temperament of a kicked cat. Florette has often been on the wrong side of it. 
That is how she responded today? She was shouting at her. And when Florette would not admit she took the bracelet, Maman really lost her temper. I have not seen her that angry before. You have been of great... I'm going to go find this bracelet. Huh. And here's the bracelet. It was carefully concealed inside a rectangular metal tin that used to be over there. I'm sure of it. Well, we have the bracelet. Things are beginning to be... All signs are point pointing to Florette being treated rather harshly by Madame. Okay. Because it's Florette was I should not be surprised by my own skills. Her incarceration appears to be the latest in a series of abuses. I have no doubt in young Florette's innocent. What I do doubt is the behavior of Madame Van der Bosch. If what I've heard is true, her treatment towards Florette is disgusting. I have to go talk to her. We know that she's innocent. And there's one more deduction to make here. I have the bracelet. And the mento tin. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. To stage a burglary and let it go so far. I cannot believe I allowed Mademoiselle Angeline to deceive me for so long, hiding the bracelet inside the chimney and staging a burglary, all part of her calculated and devious plan. Okay, so who do I need? I need to talk to Florette. I thought it was the mum, but it's her. Am I right? Yeah. Angeline, why? I guess though it wouldn't make sense because the mum would she's so convinced that it's Florette. But yeah, and she also Angeline said that nothing else was missing, but if she would have definitely noticed that her missing tin. Anything to show this is not the first time Madame Van der Bosch has taken her anger out on you. She never it? used to be such a witch. When the Viscount was alive, she was much nicer. He was the head of the house, he gave the orders, and he treated us right. I would have gone long ago, monsieur, but my family can't afford for me to be picky about my employment. I was not aware you were supporting your family, and at such a young age. Papa lost his job at the factory just before he left for good, so Mama had to work even more. I was old enough, so I went to work. When I joined the Van den Bosch house, the Viscount was very kind. I didn't think he would care, but he wanted to help. He gave me some extra in my first pay pack, enough to keep the landlord from kicking Mama out at least. No one had ever been that nice before. I didn't know what to say, but all he wanted me to do was work hard for her. He even let me to go home and visit Mama and my brothers at Christmas with a food parcel from the kitchen. Mama said she had never it seen so like much food. a nice guy. It's always been hard for her. Even before he left for good, Papa wasn't around much. And even when he was, we both wished he wasn't. My brothers were too young to remember. Mm. Well, that's horrible. What he was like, I hope. When I walked in Mama's house, everything seemed so much smaller. I must have got too used to the size of this house. I swear, you could fit our house in just this lounge. We didn't have much, but we didn't want for much. It was simple and it was home. The valuables in the house do not determine the no. love it shares. Someone should tell Madame that. Not that she'd listen anyways. I will uncover the truth of what happened today, Mademoiselle. That, I promise you. The Viscount's kind nature shines through again. His treatment of the staff is quite a contrast from that of the Madame's. From the way this young Mademoiselle speaks of her family, I cannot believe she'd risk her employment at the house. Yeah, she wouldn't. Merci. 
I shall take everything you have told me into consideration. Yeah, you innocent, bro. We know who it is. It is the daughter. Probably because she knows about their situation. Certainly, officer. I'm ready to address the house. I believe it is time the truth behind the missing you bracelet was revealed. And the bracelet. Everything will be revealed in good time. Would you be so kind as to gather everyone in the lounge? Of course. Oh, such an old school way Merci, of revealing. Mademoiselle Elizabeth for gathering everyone. Will Madame Van den Bosch be joining us shortly? She stormed past me not long ago, and I have not seen her return. Very well. Under usual circumstances, I would wait. But I think we have spent enough time on this matter, n'est-ce pas? We shall have to proceed without her. This morning started like any other. My usual ordinary patrol. <laughs> until I was approached by Mademoiselle Elizabeth about a suspected burglary and a missing bracelet. A crime I've been falsely blamed for. That I shall come to. I began my investigation outside, but it was not long before I realized there were no signs of an intruder. So I turned my focus to those in the house. You. Florette, your time here at the house has not always been the easiest for you, shall we say. I do what Madame tells me. And to the highest standard, I presume. Madame's standards are very high. I do my best. And you would at least expect fair treatment for the work, not to be spoken to in such a cruel and vicious way. Monsieur? I refer to how poorly Madame Van den Bosch treats you. You are at her beck and call, and she does nothing but belittle you. That is Maman you're talking about. Just wait until... It is nothing but the truth I speak, Mademoiselle. Hmm. All the while, Mademoiselle stands by and does not even notice such cruelty. That must have angered you. I... Perhaps you thought it was time they deserved some retribution. Stop trying to put words in her mouth. I am merely giving her a voice. One that has been silenced for so long. Maybe I do think she deserves it. She's had the world handed to her on a plate, and the likes of me get nothing. A motive begins to rear its head. You're just trying to get me to admit to something. Well, I've done nothing. Uh, allow me to finish. I am sure you will want to hear what follows. Let us return Such to Such a moment. weird roundabout way to do this. I was only trying to help Lizzie. You must have known how Madame would have reacted to your late return, especially with her prior treatment of you. She's angry at whatever I do. But nonetheless, you were willing to help a colleague, a friend, knowing what the repercussions could be. And that show of loyalty to your friend has been the thing that proved your innocence. Monsieur? Because of such willingness to help, you were delayed in town. Meaning, you had no viable way of taking the bracelet from Mademoiselle Angeline's room. There was simply no there opportunity. Wasn't. I told you. Maybe now Madame will believe me. It is evidence not even she can ignore. Which then leads us to Mademoiselle Elizabeth. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, you have been with the Van den Bosch family for quite some time now, correct? That is correct. You have grown close with both ladies of the house and your fellow members of the house staff, would you say? Of course. And I certainly hope they feel the same. Officer, please. Elizabeth, what is he talking about? I am referring to the lengths Mademoiselle Elizabeth has gone to to remain in your maman's employment. It is Madame's house. She can enforce whatever rules she chooses. Even if they are going against the very nature and cornerstone of man, to love. I still do not understand. Perhaps that is best for everyone. It is neither my place nor my want to make this situation any more awkward yeah, than... Yeah, you didn't to. really need to bring that up either. Oh, thank you. Besides, it was not that story that cleared Mademoiselle Elizabeth's name. Rather, Florette's. Florette's? But she was not here for most of the morning. But when she was, more precisely while preparing the table in the lounge, she noted that, against regularity, you arrived alone for breakfast, without Mademoiselle Angeline by your side. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I understand what... And Angeline said she was with her. She went down to breakfast with her. It means that I found myself with two suspects with potential motives. But with a lack of opportunity, I was left with only one. 
You can't believe I would hide my own bracelet. I have nothing to say. How dare you speak to me like that? You have no idea what you are talking about. Yes, I do. I know that losing your father. You can't actually believe I would hide my own jewelry. If you didn't, explain to me how your memento tin with the bracelet inside came to be lodged inside the chimney of your bedroom fireplace. You have no proof I put it there. Besides you being the only one in the room alone, even after finding the bracelet, I still did not know why you had done it. Until I contemplated why Madame was selling so many heirlooms and art. You had no right to snoop through our house in the first place. When it is part of my investigation, I have every right, mademoiselle. The unpaid bills and final notice from the telephone company. Maman can do what she wants with her art. That means nothing. But when there was no more art to sell, what then? You could not risk her taking your father's bracelet and selling it. Hmm. So, you staged a burglary pretending it had been taken, preventing her from selling it. Then you stood back as the innocent Florette paid the price. She didn't think about me at all. She was going to take my bracelet <laughs> and sell wow. it off. It would have just ended up on some old wrinkly wrist. I didn't think Maman would blame her. I didn't think she would do anything. But she did. And somehow that evidently didn't cross your mind. When Madame returns, you shall have it all yep. to explain. Maman can't know what I have done. She will be furious. But Mademoiselle Florette will be proved innocent. And that is what is important. No crime has been committed. So I see no reason why this should continue any longer. It is time you considered the consequences of your actions. And now... You must face them head on. Oh, mother's back just in time. Maman, you're home. Of course I am. And I brought someone that will bring some order to this chaos. Major Felix Hagen. He may hold the rank of major in the British Army, but I question his authority here at all. In police matters, I am the authority. This is my investigation, and I will not have Madame dictating the results any longer. Major, I can assure you, I have this situation under control. From what I have heard, you are far from it. The missing bracelet has been found, and the guilty party has been identified. I am well aware that the maid servant was behind it all. And yet, I see her standing as free and innocent as you and me. I am sure Madame Vandenbosch has informed you of her suspicions, but I am afraid it was merely speculation. Excuse me? After conducting a full investigation, the evidence and facts led me to deduce... Mademoiselle Florette could not have taken it as she was in town most of the morning. I certainly hope you are not accusing my daughter of... I'm sorry, Maman, he's right. Florette is innocent. I just wanted to show you... Shh, girl. I will not have you guilted. Are you serious? Sticky fingered girl. Madame Van den Bosch refuses to acknowledge even a fraction of what has really taken place. I was a Poirot. A word. Madame Van den Bosch was forced to make her way to inform me, alone, I might add, of the goings on at the house today. Major, with all due respect, she was impeding the investigation. This may be how some officers act in the city, but here... This is ridiculous. Oh, I hate it. Citizens. You are an officer of the law and should act as such. Insubordination like this will not be tolerated. As the ranking officer, I have conducted my investigation and... Ranking officer? Ha! You are an auxiliary officer. You have little authority over anyone, let alone a major. You would be wise to remember who is close friends with your commanding officer. After what I have heard of your past in the city, I'm sure he would look upon today's events as another failure at the hands of Officer Poirot. As absurd as this has become, I must select my battles more tactfully. I can only hope the captain at the station will see things with oui, some sense. Major. Now I suggest you do your duty 
and escort That's the maid servant to the station no. where she can be formally charged and a sufficient punishment handed out. Right away. No! I'm sorry, mademoiselle. This is not the outcome I expected. Maman was right. We'll always pay the price for the upper class's actions. We will do everything we can to clear your name. What can you do now? Madame said I'm guilty of a crime and I'll be punished. That's that. A crime that was never committed. Once the truth is explained, this wrong shall be set right. Angeline did not intend for you to be arrested. Surely you know her better than that. I should have known better than to expect anything else. Justice and fairness don't reach the likes of me. This young lady has already faced so much mistreatment at the hands of Madame Van der Bosch. I shall not allow her punishment what to you continue. Saw today was not justice. In the eyes of the law, you are innocent and have been harshly treated and wrongly accused. No one will be going to jail. But that doesn't help my employment, does it? That I cannot save. But your freedom, I shall make sure of that. I feel like an imposter dressed in police clothing. I was brought here today as a representative of the law, and any shred of authority I had was dashed at the hands of the major. I refuse to allow justice to waver and for it to become nothing more than a hand for those that wish to play it, as and when they choose. This is not the first time I have seen the law bent to fit one's purpose, but it will certainly be the last time I fail to stop it. Fuck you and your pink fence, Madame de la Bosch, bitch. <laughs> Sorry. God, I hate people. Ah. Oh. Well, I finished the prologue. Detective Poirot, I trust this finds you well. It has been many years since our paths last crossed, and while I'm sure your recollection of the events may differ from mine, I hope that receiving this letter has not rekindled a sense of animosity toward myself or the Van der Bosch name. The impression you made is something that has stayed with me since that day. It compelled me to reconsider the spoilt young lady I would have inevitably become and help shape me into the woman I wished to be. You made me see the childish and selfish girl in me that did not consider the consequences of her actions or how they may affect others. Although Maman may see the events of that day differently, I believe the compassion you showed for our maid Florette, as well as the drive to uncover the truth and accept no alternative, was a testament to your character and professionalism. Although I wish it were under different circumstances, your assistance is once again required, and I hope you will consider this as my formal request for your service. Ooh, she's getting engaged. This forthcoming weekend was due to be one full of joy and happiness at the announcement of my engagement to Gideon Demir, whom I love dearly, bringing together two illustrious families, but it has been shadowed by deceit, extortion and blackmail. The Van der Bosch name is being held to ransom by a mysterious party, and I am afraid I do not know who I can and cannot trust. We are holding a small gathering to celebrate our exciting news with what Maman calls the dignified elite, those that are well respected right. and held in high regard in both our close inner circle and society. Our private matters have always remained just that, so I fear one of those invited may be the person who is out to ruin our name, but for reasons I cannot fathom. I have enclosed a first-class rail ticket for you to join us for the announcement, and having contacted your superiors and the correct authorities to request your assistance, which they were more than happy to grant me, I shall expect your arrival with great anticipation. So I have to go. There be regardless. There carriage waiting for you at the station to bring you directly to Nemozan House. I thank you in advance in our time of crisis. Yours respectfully, Angeline van der Bosch. I hope that that young maid was exonerated.
because that's bullshit. But she, if she went to prison, chapter one, the blackmail. All right. Well, I won't be playing any more of this tonight. This game is fun. I, it reminds me very, he very heavily of, um, you know, like all the, the typical detective, you know, knives out mysteries or like murder on the Orient Express, those types of things. My favorite part is especially at the end where they gather everyone in the room and they go through and then deduce who did it. Um, always love that kind of thing. And I'm glad I found this game. I'm really bad at it. I would never make a good detective in real life. Um, and I'm glad I am not one, but, uh, I can pretend to be for a little bit. And yeah, I might play another episode of this. This might end up being multiple parts of a video. I don't know. We'll see how we go. But uh, if you made it this far, thanks for watching and hope to see you next time when we solve the mystery of whatever's happening to the spoiled teenager that was Mademoiselle Angeline. And yeah, have a good one, guys. Bye.